Welcome to the latest episode of AT Carney Procurement and Analytics Solutions, the Wave of the Future podcast series. I'm Helen Clegg, and my guest today is Raj Ramagam, a sourcing associate with Procurement and Analytics Solutions in AT Carney. The topic of today's podcast is sourcing palm oil. Palm oil production involves a very complex supply chain and poses significant challenges to companies when trying to establish full traceability along the supply chain. Palm oil is now one of the most widely used vegetable oils and is a key ingredient in many food items, as well as cosmetics and biofuel. Raj, welcome to today's podcast. I'd like to start by asking you to share some market knowledge on the supply market of palm oil. Which are the key countries where palm oil is grown and which countries consume the largest amounts of palm oil? Thank you, Helen. Happy to be here and talking to our listeners. Oil palm fruit typically grows in and around the equator. Um, it's believed that it was a wild plant that grew in Africa that was transplanted by the uh, colonials uh, to Asia. and Currently, about 86% of all oil palm fruit cultivation takes place in Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, cultivation has also moved into other countries such as Brazil, uh, many countries in um, Africa, and uh, Papua New Guinea as well. So the oil palm fruit itself uh, is uh, c- consists of a seed or the kernel, the shell, the endocarp, and the flesh between the seed and the shell, uh, the mesocarp. The oil that's extracted from the kernel is called palm kernel oil, and the oil that comes from the flesh is palm oil. The oil palm fruit is a very versatile crop. It's uh, relatively cheap. It's very high yielding. About 5.3% of all cultivatable land is required to produce about 31.3% of global uh, oil and fats. A uh, hectare um, yields about 3.68 tons of uh, metric ton compared to soy, which only a uh, hectare of which only yields about uh, 0.59 tons. Uh, the main consumers of uh, palm oil, uh, in no particular order, uh, are India, China, countries in Europe, United States, Pakistan, and Egypt, to name a few. Raj, what impact has the dramatic increase on palm oil cultivation had on the environment? You shared with us some figures there, and and the the increase is is really substantial. So how has this impacted the environment in the countries that produce the palm oil? Great question, Alan. Let's look at what has happened within the industry. Uh, Let's look at cultivation. In 1990, oil palm fruit cultivation was around 60 million tons. By 2010, it had jumped to 218 million metric tons. That's a significant jump. And when you consider 86% of the production is taking place in Malaysia and Indonesia, this has had a major impact on the forest cover in these countries. Massive deforestation has taken place and conversion of forest land and peatland into plantations has had a huge impact on flora and fauna and has pushed many species into extinction or near extinction. Raj, yes, I've read as well about the near extinction of species, and I know that buying palm oil that doesn't come from sustainable sources is dramatically contributing to the decline of wildlife in countries such as Borneo and Sumatra, where palm oil plantations are destroying the native habitat of orangutans. And in fact, I read somewhere that the Sumatran orangutan is critically endangered, according to the ICUN Red List. And scientists estimate that there are only around 60,000 orangutans left in total in these two countries, which is a, a total shame for the whole of the environment and, in fact, for the planet. Raj, palm oil is used as a key ingredient in many food products, as well as in the manufacture of cosmetics, for example. Do you have examples of other types of manufacturing processes which use palm oil as a key ingredient? There's oil that's extracted from the kernel of the oil palm fruit and from the flesh, which is palm oil. So we have palm kernel oil and palm oil. And amazingly, they have different physical and chemical characteristics. And the range of industries they find use in is just amazing. Its applications include such things as surfactants, agrochemicals, industrial cleaning, 
printing inks, pulp and paper manufacturing, animal feeds, biodiesel, furniture, and on and on and on. It is indeed a very versatile crop. Right, and I think that's one of the reasons why companies uh, have increased their procurement of the oil, because it is incredibly versatile and it has a very high yield. So, Raj, has the trend to move to sustainable sourcing of palm oil had an impact on the industry? Uh, and if so, what are some of the recent developments? Helen, the explosive growth that has come with this, within this industry has taken its toll on the environment. The degradation due to loss of uh, deforestation and pushing species to near extinction all attracted the eyes of many NGOs. And the NGOs spearheaded a campaign that launched a sustainability movement within this industry. So in 2003-2004 uh, time frame, an organization called Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil was formed. And this organization was a multi-stakeholder organization with representation drawn from growers, processors, traders, retailers, consumer goods manufacturers, banks, and investors. And the RSPO, as it's known, has really put a structure behind the whole sustainability movement and is driving the agenda forward. Raj, just let me interject a minute. What is the vision and mission of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil? And what is the RSPO doing to promote the use of certified sustainable palm oil to manufacturers? So, Helen, RSPO, their primary mission is to ensure sustainable palm oil becomes the norm in all markets. That is what they are striving for. In order to do that, they have come up with a certification program and have created three different supply chain models to drive a company to the path of achieving 100% use of 100% certified sustainable palm oil. The reason that they have created these three supply chain models is taking into account that you cannot flick the switch and go from using a conventional oil source today and using a certified sustainable palm oil source tomorrow. So the three models, uh, one is a segregated supply chain model in which only oil from sustainable sources are used in, uh, in producing the end product. The other one is called the mass balance, which allows a ratio of uh, conventional versus uh, sustainable palm oil mixing to take place. And the third one is a book and claim, which is typically the use of conventional palm oil, but in volumes for which you can buy and trade in certificates. So companies have adopted a strategy to use a mix of these three different supply chain models and set a target to achieve 100% CSPO. And many companies who are members of RSPO have set a target of 2015 to be 100% CSPO. So Raj, can you now talk a little bit about the complexity of the supply chain of palm oil? And also, what about the regulatory requirements that are starting to take hold? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? So if you look at the value chain, um, in, in, in palm oil production. Um, it, it starts from the plantations, the growers, it goes to the crushers where the crude is produced, then on to the refiners. Then because the product is produced in, in Malaysia and Indonesia predominantly, then it has to be shipped. Once it is shipped, then it has to go through a final stage refining before it reaches the end user. The, the complexity comes from uh, when you're, if you're trying to implement three different supply chain models, then you really have to have three different streams within which the, the, the product has to, has to flow through. So all that translates to cost. As it stands, 14% of global palm oil production currently is CSPO. And of this 14%, uh, it's estimated around 52% was consumed last year. So the uptake of CSPO in the market has been rather slow. And this has been primarily because of cost implications. 
But in recent years, what has happened in the regulatory environment to speed up consumption of uh, CSPO is countries like uh, United Kingdom, Belgium, France, Netherlands, and Germany have required the use of 100% CSPO. So this has prompted many companies to create a supply chain that is 100% CSPO and that has sped up implementation uh, of, a, of a sustainable palm oil uh, supply chain. Uh, more countries are expected to follow suit, and if that happens, then uh, the demand, which has uh, shown a slight increase in, in, in recent years, the demand for CSPO, is uh, expected to I increase, increase further. Raj, tell us about the actions companies need to take to implement a sustainable palm oil supply chain. So, as I told earlier, Helen, RSPO was established in 2003 and 2004 timeframe. And some of the multinationals uh, were members from, from the early stage. And some of them have made significant progress in creating sustainable palm oil supply chain. We have seen in, in the recent months and uh, in, in, within the last year that uh, new, new companies are becoming members of our, our RSPO and are trying to create a sustainable palm oil supply chain. In order to implement a sustainable palm oil supply chain, it just does not mean you become a member of RSPO and you know it's guaranteed. You need strong commitment from the management. The creation of the sustainable palm oil supply chain should be an executive agenda. Companies should have a responsible sourcing guidelines that direct the procurement department on how to procure certified sustainable palm oil. And companies should use help of third party service providers to help them get there. So it is a long drawn process and a proper strategy it is required to be in place to get there. Raj, what I really want to know is why should companies bother switching to certified sustainable palm oil from your perspective and from your experience? I mean, after all, it's more expensive to procure, which means that it increases the price of their products. So what are the key benefits in making the switch? Helen, the best way to answer this question is to say three points. One is brand risk. Two is a connected customer. And three is this is the right thing to do. To elaborate on that, the first one, brand risk. Companies are exposed, are exposing themselves if they do not have a sustainable supply chain solution. This is becoming more and more a norm. And it does not matter if it is related to labor practices or it is related to something to do with the environment. The backlash that a company can suffer in the marketplace is significant. So that is why I'm, I, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking about brand risk. Second one is I'm talking about a connected customer. A customer because of social media, because of mobility, is very well aware of what's happening in the marketplace and what is happening in their favorite brands. So whenever a customer hears about something that's targeted at a brand that they are familiar with, they are bound to react. So that is why it is an important factor to consider. The third one, it is the right thing to do. I mean, we have seen the emergence of CSR, and this has continued to gain momentum as more and more companies are beginning to adopt tight standards, policies, stricter controls. And companies have gone to an extent where they are appointing somebody in the executive committee to spearhead the CSR movement. So obviously, this is the right thing to do. These are the main factors that I would list as, com as to why companies need to create a sustainable supply chain solution. Raj, thanks so much for sharing your insight into the palm oil supply market. I found that an incredibly interesting insight, and I'm sure we could have a longer conversation about it. Just to summarize the main points, um, Raj talked about the massive increase in palm oil production in the last 30 years because of its properties and usefulness as an ingredient to um, a wide range of products. Also, sourcing 
palm oil is cheaper than other types of vegetable oils. And this increase in, in palm oil and the demand for palm oil has led to more and more palm oil plantations, which has in turn contributed to massive deforestation, loss of peatland, destruction of wildlife habitat, and indeed global warming. However, there are a number of benefits that companies can gain from sourcing palm oil from certified sustainable suppliers, and these include help with brand reputation management, so protecting brand and brand equity. The fact that there's actually a good supply market of certified sustainable palm oil, there's more oil out there that's certified sustainable than not sustainable, so there's no shortage of supply. And also the fact that by sourcing sustainably, this helps conserve our natural world's diminishing resources and wildlife. I'm Helen Clegg in London, and I'd like to thank Raj Arumagam for being my guest today. I'd also like to thank our production engineer, Tom Klein. Thank you for listening to this edition of The Wave of the Future. If you have any comments on this podcast or have a suggestion for a podcast topic, please share your thoughts via Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at ATKPAS. This has been an AT Carney Procurement and Analytics Solutions podcast production. Join us again soon for our next Wave of the Future podcast. <laughs>